Hi all, today we are going to see the comparison of different AC bridges used for measurement of self-inductance. So, first different type of bridges that are used are the Maxwell's Wien Bridge or simple Maxwell's Bridge will be there and then followed by Maxwell's Wien Bridge. This Maxwell's Wien Bridge which is also called as Maxwell's Inductance Capacitance Bridge is used for measurement of inductance in terms of the capacitance and the resistance. So, variable capacitor and resistor will be used and this is used for the Q values between 1 to 10 and this is the formula for the balance equation for measurement of R1 and L1 and similarly the next type of bridge is the Hayes bridge. So, Hayes bridge is the modification of this Maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge. So, here instead of keeping this capacitor in parallel with the resistance here we keep a variable capacitor in series with a variable resistor that means these two are the variables only they are kept in series instead of parallel so that it can be effectively used for q values greater than 10 that means to make it useful for q greater than then this Hayes bridge is used then comes to anderson bridge because the previous two bridges cannot be used for measurement of low q values particularly for measurement of the q value less than one we go for the anderson bridge so in the case of anderson bridge one extra junction will be formed and the advantage in the anderson bridge is the value of the capacitor will be fixed and we get the balance by using the variable resistors one resistor will be r and the another resistor will be this r1 by varying this r1 and r we get the balance. So, then comes the Ohm's bridge. So, this Ohm's bridge also is used for medium values of the Q only. Ideally speaking, it can be used for any value of the Q, but practically it is limited to use between Q value of 1 to 10 only. So, let us see these things in detail. Then we will see the advantages, disadvantages and conclusions. So, remember here I am briefly discussing about all the methods only. If you want the detailed derivation or other things, you can refer to my previous lectures. So, let us start with the Maxwell's inductance bridge. This is used for measurement of medium inductances. So, in this case, the unknown inductance is determined by comparing with a standard self-inductance. So, you can see here, these are my variable resistance and variable reactor. These are my standard values. That means, I know accurately what is the value while varying. So, you by varying these things, we get the balance of the bridge and measure these things. So, how to get the balance? Under balanced condition, we know the product of the opposite branches. That means, this is Z1 multiplied by Z4 will be equal to this Z2 multiplied by Z3. Just substitute those those formulas and compare the real and imaginary terms on both sides, you will get the value of R1 will be equal to R2 plus small r2 into R3 divided by R4 and we will get the value of unknown inductance L1 will be L2 multiplied by R2 divided by R3. So, always in order to get the balance easily, we have to select the terms which are independent terms. So, out of these things, because you can see R3 by R4 is appearing in both the equations. So, only this capital R2 plus small r2 is not appearing and L2 is not appearing. So, that's why in practice, we take the value of this R2 and L2 are independent terms and hence they are varied to get the balance. But the disadvantage of this bridge is as two coils are there, so the, the flux that is leaking from this coil will link with this second coil. So, that may create the interference or the mutual inductance effect. So, shielding will be very difficult task. That's why this is not used in practice. So, in practice, we go for Maxwell Wien Bridge or it is also called as Maxwell's Inductance Capacitance Bridge. The name came from the term we are measuring the inductance in terms of the capacitance. So, for this, this is particularly useful for measuring the Q values between 1 to 10. So, here a variable capacitor is used in parallel with a variable resistor and again same thing if you do the product of Z1 multiplied by Z4 is equal to Z2 multiplied by Z3 and simplify, you will get your value of R1 is equal to R2 R3 by R4 and you will get the value of L1 is equal to C4 into R2 into R3. So, again you can see here R2 R3 is common in both the equations which are different. C4 is different and R4 is different. So, these two are the independent terms. So, C4 and R4 are used for varying and getting the balance. For getting the balance, we vary the value of R4 and C4. So, the advantage of this method is inductance is measured by comparing with the capacitor and the capacitor does not produce any external field and it is compact. So, it is more easier to shield as compared to that of the inductor and this balance equation we have seen it is independent of the frequency. So, if 
R2 and R3 are taken as a decayed resistor such that R2 is equal to R3 is equal to like for example 10 to the power of 3 ohms. So product of R2 multiplied by R3 will be 10 to the power of 6. So this L1 because from the balance equation it is C4 into R2 into R3. This will be nothing but R2 into R3 we are getting as 10 to the power of 6. So this will be C4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. We know that practically the value of the capacitor is measured in microfarads. So micro multiplied by mega that will cancel out. So after doing the adjustment whatever is the value of the capacitor showing there that indicates the value of the unknown inductance in Henry. The value of the unknown inductance in Henry that much easily we can get the scale. And the disadvantage of this bridge is this bridge requires a variable standard capacitor which will be very costly. And second one the variable capacitor will be less accurate when compared to that of fixed capacitor. So that is a second disadvantage. So practically we have to maintain the C4 is maintained constant by using a decayed capacitor box that means we will keep the approximate value of the capacitor that means fixed capacitor bank will be there we will select the appropriate capacitor from that and only the R4 and R2 or R3 because we know the equation for R1 is having R2 R3 by R4 and the equation for L is R2 into R3 into C4. Here C4 is constant. So out of these two, I have to select one as the variable. So I will select either R2 or R3 as variable for getting L1. And for tuning this one, we will vary the value of R4. By that we get the balance. So, but there is a disadvantage of this one. So if you calculate the value of the Q, Q is nothing but quality factor is omega L divided by R. So you substitute the value of L from here and R from here, you will get it as omega C4 into R4. So this bridge is limited for the measurement of medium Q conduct inductors only. The reason is for measurement of high Q coils requires because you can see from here as the Q is increasing for a constant value of C the value of R4 required will increase. And if you are going for the Q greater than 10 practically the value of R4 required will be up to in the range of 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of 6 ohms. So getting a variable capacitor of this much high value that to accurate variable capacitor variable resistor is very difficult task. So that's why this method is not used for measuring Q coils greater than 10. Now coming for the Q values less than 1 that means low Q values. So in that case, so this is for example, the radio frequency coil which is used for radio frequency but here for measurement purpose we are using the low frequency. So in that case the Q will be less than 1 in that case. So getting the balance by varying R2 and R4 alternately particularly for low Q values will be practically observed that it is very difficult. So it will take so much time and very uh, complicated procedure. So that's why generally for Q less than 1 also this method is not used. So I am summarizing this method is used only in the range of Q between 1 and 10 and the disadvantage of this method is the capacitor is a variable capacitor. So practically the capacitor is not varied it is kept constant only the value of R4 and either R2 or R3 one of these resistors will be varied in practice to get the balance. So next bridge is the Hayes bridge. In the Hayes bridge this is the modification of the Maxwell Wien bridge above bridge. So in order to make it useful for Q greater than 10 that means this is only used for Q values greater than 10. So in this case again same thing a capacitor is connected in series with the resistor both are variables. If you get the balance equation the balance equation of R1 will be you can see this much complex and L1 also very complex. We get a very complex equation and the second one this is having a frequency term also. That means this is having a frequency term also that's why this is not used for medium range values of Q values. So if you calculate the Q factor of the coil that means omega L1 divided by R1 you will get it as 1 by omega into R4 into C4. 1 by omega into R4 into C4. So as both the equations 1 and 2 that means the balance equations are having the frequency term. So we should know the frequency of your source then only you can substitute here practically if some noise is introduced or if your source is not pure sine wave in that case we cannot substitute in this formula. But if the value of Q is greater than 10 so in that case 1 by Q square will become equal to 0 0.01 which is far far less than 1. So in that case this value of the L1 which can be written in terms of Q as R2 R3 C4 divided by 1 plus 1 by Q square because we know 1 by Q square is equal to 0 0.01 which is far far less than 1. So this can be approximated as R2 R3 into C4. You can see this equation is similar to that of 
Maxwell's bridge. And the second equation for the case of resistance also, if you calculate, you will get it as R2 R3 by R4 into Q square. Because the Q square value is very less, so we can approximately take it as 1 by Q square as 0 0.01. So, R will be 0 0.01 times of R2 R3 by R4. Again, the calculation will be easy because frequency term is not involved. Again, here you can observe these two equations in the L R2 R3 and C4 and here R2 R3 R4. So, what are the variables required? Here the variables required will be C4 and R4. That means we use a variable capacitor C4 and variable resistor R4 are getting the balance. So, for Q values less than 10, I told you, because the frequency term is there which cannot be neglected. So, that creates the problem. That's why this is used only for the Q values greater than 10. So, what are the benefits of this bridge when compared to the previous bridge? In the case of previous bridge, as the value of Q is greater than 10, I told the resistance value increases drastically. So, getting a variable resistor of large value is difficult. But in this case, you can see the formula for the Q factor, the resistor is coming in the denominator. That means as the value of Q is increasing, what will happen to resistance? Resistance value will goes on decreasing. That means for high Q values, the value of the variable resistor required is very less and getting the variable resistor of low value is very easy because it is cheaper and even it will be more accurate for making, making the measurement, variable resistor measurement for low resistance values. So, that is the having the benefit for this. That is why it is used for Q greater than 10. So, now coming to the next bridge, this is Anderson bridge. So, the above bridge can be used only for Q greater than 10 and Maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge can be used for 1 to 10. So, this Anderson bridge is used for particularly designed for Q of the coil less than 1. So, particularly for that case it is used and the second advantage is in this case the capacitor is fixed, it is not a variable, only the resistors are varied to get the balance. So, generally this is small r and small r1 are varied. So, if you take the balance equation you will get it as r1 is equal to r2 r3 by r4 minus r1 and l1 will be equal to c into r3 r, r3 by r4 into small r into r2 plus r4 plus r2 r4. You can see here r2 r4 R3 are appearing in both the equations. So, only things that are not appearing is R1, small r1 is coming only in R1, that means first equation and small r is coming only in second equation. That is why this small r1 and r are taken as the independent terms and can easily get the convergence or the balance because both are independent terms. But the disadvantage of this one is, here you can see this is having one extra junction. So, providing the shielding will be very difficult task. And second one, even the equation for R and L, you can see the equation for L is very complex, very big size, the calculation will be tedious. So, that is the second disadvantage. So, let us summarize what are the advantage and disadvantage. It is easier to obtain the balance than the Maxwell's wind bridge, particularly for low Q coils and because we are varying the independent parameters. Then, fixed capacitor is used and hence the accuracy will be more when compared to the previous bridges and this can be used for determination of even capacitance in terms of inductance also. But the disadvantage is it is more complex than the Maxwell's bridge as more parts are involved and it is having the complex balance equations and second one additional junction point increases the difficulty of shielding of the bridge. So, this Anderson bridge is used only for measurement of low Q coils and for measurement of Q between 1 to 10, we go for Maxwell's wind bridge and greater than 10, we go for the another bridge we have already discussed. So, but again for less than 1 also, because we prefer to go for the Maxwell's wind bridge only if the variable capacitor is permitted. Because the reason is, in this case, the bridge is very complex and shielding will be very difficult task. So, when compared to this one, the Maxwell's wind bridge equations are very simple and it is easy to shield also. That's why if variable capacitor can be provided for low Q values, so in that case, we will prefer to go for the Maxwell's wind bridge only. The Owens bridge is used for measuring the self-inductance over a very wide range by employing a capacitor of a reasonable size. Here also variable capacitor will be required, but the size of the variable capacitor is not very high when compared to the previous methods. So, in this, if you take the balance equations, you will get the value of L1 will be equal to R2 R3 into C4 and the value of R1 will be R3 into C4 divided by C2. So, you can see here both equations R3 and C4 are common. So, the independent variables are R2 and C2. 
So that's why R2 and C2 varied to get the balance. So the advantage of this method is the variable elements R2 and C2 are in the same arm and hence the convergence will be very fast compared to remaining methods. And this balance equation do not contain any frequency term and can be used for measuring the inductance of wide range by employing a variable capacitor of reasonable size. But the disadvantage is as this need a variable capacitor, variable capacitor is expensive also and it is not so much accurate also. Accuracy will be around 1% and the value of the variable capacitor tends to increase by increasing the value of the Q of the coil. As the Q of the coil is increasing, quality factor of the coil is increasing, so bigger size value of the capacitor is required. So the disadvantage of needing the higher value of this capacitor can be overcome by inserting one resistance, one variable resistance in series with the unknown inductor. That means if you are inserting this resistance R extra here, then the equation will be modified like this. L1 will be equal to R2 R3 into C4 and R1 will be R3 C4 by C2 minus R. Higher Q means the inductance is more when compared to the resistance or otherwise we can tell the resistance will goes on decreasing as you are going for higher value of Q. Meaning you understand higher value of Q that resistance decreasing means by increasing this value of R automatically the balance can be obtained easily. So no need to vary the value of C2 that is the advantage of this one. That means only variable we have to vary is R2 will be varied and R will be varied and C2 can be taken as nearly constant. So this disadvantage can be overcome using this method. I hope this complete concept of measurement of inductance is completely clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.